I think we would have let it go if, if the home inspector was thorough enough. How much water sits here? We're waiting for the big, big rain for it to come rushing into our basement. The longer we live here, the more stuff we find. The bedroom is directly above us here. They're talking about it's cold, it's freezing. If there was a lot of money to be put into the house, we probably would have opted out. Brian and Kelly, looking for their very first starter home. Kind of makes sense to live in the area of where they work. Everything's around here. Great for Hayden, their young little baby. They do the right thing. They bring in a home inspector. They walk around with him and ask him questions. What did he miss? I'm going to do a homes inspection, and I'll let you know. We were looking for a house with a backyard with enough bedrooms to um, cater to our growing family. One of the big things was that this house was a shorter commute than living outside of the city, which is what a lot of people do. We found this, it was just on the border of the city, close to, you know, public transit, and just seemed amazing to us. So it's a nice size house, and upstairs there's four bedrooms up there, which was surprising. I thought it was three originally. And the, the basement was already finished, and I was like, oh, this is great. I can, you know, our, our little son can play down here. I can uh, put my guitars and my music over there. And, you know, it's just the layout of it worked out really well. We were both at the inspection. We went around all the different parts of the house. The overall rating of the house was above average. So we figured, oh, the home inspector gave it the thumbs up. So let's buy this house. It is a hot day. Looking back, we see that there was a lot of stuff that was missed. As first-time home buyers, we didn't have big bags of money going in or anything like that, so we wouldn't have bought the house if we had known that there was all these extra things that we would have had to invest in. We would have looked for a fixer-upper in that case. Brian. Brian. I'm Mike. Nice, nice to meet you. you. Kelly? Hi, Mike. Nice Pleasure to meet you. you. Is it hot out? Oh, it is. Yes, it's this boiling. is what we call muggy. <laughs> yeah. It's only spring, and I don't mind this. Yeah. Look I at know. that. I see a leak right away. Yeah. Somebody's cocked underneath. Mm -hmm. You see your, you have a J-mold trim there, and then hold your siding coming right. vertical. That's why you're leaking right here. The water hits that vertical. It comes right down to the J-mold. There's nowhere for it to escape. It's actually yeah. bleeding back in. Oh, okay. Has it created any damage? It is wood. Is it moldable on top? The answer is yes. Has it molded? So should it be looked at? Well, it should be fixed, right? Yeah. I'm looking forward to Mike coming, of course, but I, I'm afraid of what he's going to find. I'm just, I don't want to know. <laughs> I noticed you have bedrooms over the garage. Let me guess, freezing cold in the winter. Yes. After living a, uh, a winter in this house, we noticed that the, the rooms above the garage were freezing. We call one of them the meat locker. It is just. I put plastic on the windows. We went out and we got a booster fan for our son's room. We closed the two doors in the front, put towels underneath, <laughs> just trying to contain the cold into that front part of the house. How many times do I got to take this down and insulate it properly because it's never been good enough? But not too often do I walk into a garage and there's panel on the wall that's not fire rated. If a fire happens in here, it spreads throughout the house, not to mention that it's not even sealed properly. It's one thing I love about taking it down and spray foaming it is that we stop that cold from getting into the house as well as we stop the gases from coming in it. Then we'll put up drywall and make it fire rated. Let's look at your grading. One of the things that we noticed that the home inspector didn't write anything about was our backyard, the leveling of our backyard. That sucks. Yeah, is, that where your, is that where your pond is? Yeah, well, in, yeah, in and around there, yeah. underway. <sighs> yeah, I almost tripped on that. Look at that, OK. So this is obviously the lowest area right here. Yes. yes. The first major rainstorm that we got, we had an out outdoor pool, basically. It was, we look outside, and we were like, oh my goodness, we've got a pool out here. What is this? And uh, I went outside, and I checked it out, and I ended up shoveling it into the grass because I didn't know what to do with it. I, I was afraid that our house was going to flood. So a flat topography? No. It's not. No, we have bad grading is what we have. The inspector never touched on the fact that our ground was unlevel in the backyard. I don't see a lot of ventilation. Now, I'm looking at your soffit. I see one perforated soffit yeah. here. 
two soffits for your neighbors. And so this means we possibly have a lot of bad airflow in your attic. So did we see any mold or anything in your attic? No, he didn't mention mold. Did at you all. look in it? No. He, he did go up in the attic. He took his stepladder, uh, went up there, and uh, took his flashlight and looked around. He just poked his head in, though, didn't he? Yeah, and, and said that the installation was adequate for the, the age of the home and the size of the home. Let's go inside. OK. <laughs> Your home inspector didn't talk about this, did he? No. No. <laughs> OK. If we have a handrail on the wall, it's totally acceptable. If we have an open area right here, this now becomes a guardrail. And a guardrail must be 36 inches, must have pickets, so follow all the rules that, so some, when somebody finished this basement, they didn't do it properly, and this is incorrect and should have been put in the report. I read in the report, plumbing, no problems, in big words. Mm -hmm. This is a bathroom sink, yep. OK? It's, there's nothing that says you can't have it. Here's where the washing machine drops itself down into the drain. How interesting is that? What size is that pipe? Two inches, Two right? Inches. Okay. Goes down into a beautiful big trap that ties right back into an inch and a half. So we can always actually start with small and go to big, but you can't go from big to small. Because what that does is like the highway, it's, uh, we would look at it as a bottleneck. Oh, yeah. It starts to back up. Okay. Same thing here, and especially for a washing machine, you don't want that. As soon as the washing machine is dumping into that drain, and then you try and turn on that sink and have water drop down, it's going to have a competition of water. And that's going to back right back up. And I'm surprised you haven't flooded from this. So plumbing, no problems. We're not sure if we have a drain on the floor. Well, you have a drain somewhere. <laughs> you have a drain somewhere, but I see carpet everywhere. Where the hell's the drain, right? I'll see if I can find it. Pretend it never happened. <laughs> we'll go upstairs. At least it's louvered. I'm going to go through the rest of the house. I'll show you what I find. I'll fix it. There's a hole here, and something tells me this hole right here used to be an exhaust fan to a dryer, right? Because of the size of it. No one's going to drill a hole that big to put in PVC, right? Yeah. right? So that's, that's an electrical line. Mike's inspection went into the things that we never would have thought of that a home inspector should know, but ours obviously didn't. You know, it's funny. I look around these houses, and what do I see? Minor crack wasn't in the report easily. It's minor. Everyone panics when they see this and they think, oh my God, the house is falling down. It's not an issue. We'll just do some caulking and fill that area just to stop the water from getting in. The biggest problem that I see and probably the one that's responsible for the break, both on the left and right hand side, is the siding. Since we know that water's coming in and it's directly responsible for how the siding and J-mold is, Water's gotten into here. I'm going to pull this down. It's going to serve two purposes. One, a full inspection to see what's up there. Again, to show me where the water's coming from within the inspection. Two, I can now insulate that area because I am going to gut the garage and put in spray foam. So now this allows me to insulate here, which is also underneath the bedroom above. How far do I have to go? Will I have to take the siding down? I'll know when I pull this down. It's obvious the grade was brought up over the years, including the driveway that's old. And that's why I mean over the years, because if the driveway's been done and I can tell this is old, it's been brought up over the brick because for many years now, this being approximately 40 years old, that water on that side of the property is going to bleed in and hit the foundation. Now, this is supposed to be the vent for the uh, central vacuum. I don't think they need to run the muffler out of this side of the house. The problem that I'm seeing is that the vent is so low to the grade as snow gets in, what does it do? Snow gets in, it melts. Same as the dryer vent. The problem, once again, is that it's too low to grade. This hole right here used to be an exhaust fan to a dryer, which told me somebody changed downstairs. Wash and dry used to be here. That leads to so many other questions. Electrical, plumbing, what was closed in? How did they close it in? And it's not the best way to actually run wire across the wall and tie it into a second light. They have conduit. Why didn't they continue? And it's a shame, really. This will be the area that possible water has penetrated. I'm going to take down some of the ceiling in here because it's going to show me some of the things they've done 
More than likely, I'm gonna concentrate on that corner. I used to have a laundry room at that area. Sink, electrical, I wanna know what they've done. Mr. Bennett. Yes, sir, what do you got for me? So the inspector comes in. Yeah. No problems in the garage, what does he say? I need a door closer on the yeah. door. Right? It's an interior door. Yeah, well, they tried to put a door closer on the door and it fell off, right? <laughs> yeah, okay. it's, it's not biting it's in hollow. anything. It's a yeah. hollow core door. Yeah. Worse than that, here we have a 3 8 of an inch drywall, right? Because of the joints, because of everything else, yeah. it's not fire rated, it's not proper. We're going to have right. issues of uh, off gassing from the vehicles coming in the house. And guess what? Spray foam. Freezing cold on the second I'll floor. I'll bet. Simple things, I'd like to pull all this down. We're gonna have to find a place for it to go because I don't like it this way. I'd you rather sure? have shelves across. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, don't do that. I'm, I'm underneath it. Okay. It's only helped by a few screws, dude. <laughs> okay. You would easily pop that down. Other issues I have is the central vac. We have a muffler line that runs through the house and up the other side of the house. Okay. Uh, I haven't gotten in the attic yet. The last time I was here, it was blistering hot. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. And here we go. <laughs> I'm gonna do this. You don't even have to. You can just tell me. OK. Heads or tails? I'm going to go heads. You're going to go heads? Yeah. Oh! Tails! Oh! That means no, I win. Oh, I know. That's tails. Does that mean I'm going up alone? Yes. <laughs> Damn. OK, we have a rail. <laughs> That's right. We have a rail. Problem is, is we have an opening, and now we have guard issues, right? Right. So we see a beautiful little laundry room here. Mm-hmm. Totally wrong. Plumbing, electrical, interesting. Everything. And as a matter of fact, the home inspector didn't notice anything about plumbing. <laughs> really? Yeah. I mean, take a quick look, right? Oh, a two wow. inch line running into an inch and a half, and it's just it's a T. So here's what I want to do. We're gonna <sighs> probably open up this wall, yep. do washer and dryer, okay, and change the door, and then we'll do a laundry tub. So try and fit this up. Okay. Deal with Martin. I've already talked to him about it. And maybe the maybe the washer's here and the dryer's here and the sink is there, gotcha. right? Still leaving a little bit of storage because there is a door to underneath yep. the stairs, right? And maybe just moving the door. We'll address everything else. I do want to pull this down. Now, with the grade being high, it tells me over the years they had water coming in. Mm -hmm. Look at the corner. I know, I just saw that. Look at the mold. That's where there's a pond in the backyard. Right, right here. Now also, the, the dryer used to duct out right here, right? right? So is water coming in there. Now, oh, we, if this is showing on this side, right. it's the other side I'm What's worried What's happening about. back there, okay. Mine are on the back side. Yeah. If the water gets in, it's definitely going somewhere, uh, which means it's going underneath the carpet, which is really a good thought to check that next. So now you know what? So far, this looks pretty good. I'm feeling good about that. Me too. They've drywalled over drywall, haven't they? Oh, there's foam on the wall. Now, it's styrofoam. It's not a rigid foam, but it's pretty damn good if you want to look at it as a point of insulation. It's better than bat insulation. Right. The reason that's hard to break is because of the foam behind it, the styrofoam. Nothing on the back side. That's what I wanted to see. Well, I don't think we have a problem on the outside walls. Let's pull the baseboard across okay. the back and take a look, just like I did here. Just as, if you can see the same thing when all the walls are fine. Right. Let's You're... go ahead and make the call to pull the ceiling. So pull the ceiling right around the room, cut the seams all the way around, and yep. stop at that wall, the laundry room wall, yep. straight across. OK. Mike thinks the laundry area has been moved from the back of the house to the front of the house. So, we've already found a lot of plumbing and electrical issues. We want to drop this ceiling to make sure there's no hidden problems here. You know, it's funny, the home inspector didn't say anything about grade. We have a drop to the front. I really like the way it goes down. They picked up the side. You can see how they followed the brick all the way up. Actually, we do have a poured foundation. So they've come up over the brick. Now, by code, we need about six inches of foundation yeah. and then brick. Uh, obviously, I can't drop this down because I'm going to have a bathtub here, right? Especially the backyard area. You can see this one spot here. So this here just fills with water right to the wall. And it makes total sense. We got higher grade there, higher grade here. Here's the bottom of the bowl. The problem with this is someone has brought 
the whole corner of this property up and created the bowl. The fence all the way along it, they've built it up along the bottom. The tree's not helping. No, the tree's not helping. It's lifting the earth up there because I can see the rundown from this side. Good meaning people, they put in a garden, don't think of where the water's gonna go and they capture it. Everything is stopping right here. Then if you come out into the back, you can actually see yeah. that pitches down over there. They've got huge grade issues all the way along this back corner. That being common area on the other side, we can trench a weeper through it. Okay, make it so. All right, thank you. Okay, Carlito, you got the ladder in here? Yes, sir. So, haul it. Heads or tails? It doesn't matter what it is, I'm going <laughs> up. Not necessarily. <laughs> all right, all right, uh, I'll go with uh, heads. And it's tails! Oh, let me see. No, it's tails! <laughs> I would have rather spend a bit more money on the home inspector and not invest in the entire house and, and find out all these different problems later on. Well, I didn't find a lot, buddy. I did find some you stuff. Got it nice and neat. Yeah. Uh, uh, hidden junctions. Yeah, we just got one here, open face, right? And against code. Another one there, yeah. Now, the plumbing. So we had no vent upstairs, and here's the other hole exactly. they had. Yeah. I got a funny feeling that in behind the sink, it's there. Yeah, so somebody put in the new sink, whether they capped it off or not, they closed it off. There's a yeah. vent. I know there's a vent. That flex line is probably for that register that's in the floor, and they couldn't squeeze it in. We're going to see that better once you drop this side. OK. Now we're going to get Frank to check the electrical. We'll get Martin to check the plumbing. Gary is already here looking at the furnace. When I drop this ceiling, he can do a full HVAC inspection, especially the duct lines going up to the second floor. We got a big issue with this hot water tank venting. This one is not even connected. You got a big opening in this pipe. It's a four inch pipe. That's going from four to three inch. Incorrect venting. I cannot leave this like this. These people can die in here. Um, you have a carbon monoxide spilling from this venting, let alone you got a big opening gash that looks like it's never been patched inside the supply air. So you got a lot of air volume getting lost in this room. Whoever did the home inspection here should have caught this definitely if they even looked at the furnace for that matter. It's not a way to connect vent pipe. That's leaking right there. We're gonna take this down. This is really unsafe, okay? They've packed stuff on it. We're gonna give them proper shelves all the way around. We wanna get proper insulation here. We're gonna drop the ceiling in here as well, guys. We got a lot of stuff to move around in here. It just looks like you're behind the gel bars. <laughs> Let me out of here! I want out of here! The fact that we see black on pink insulation is just meaning that there's air circulation behind the wall. We're in a garage. There is not supposed to be any air penetration because what is this supposed to be doing? We're supposed to be stopping carbon monoxide and smoke from entering the house. This is why we tape our scenes. This is actually indicating that there's a lot of air movement behind this wall. What does that mean? Smoke comes in here, this fills with smoke. It's gonna be doing the same thing, getting behind the walls and getting in where it's dangerous. Mike thought there was a vent stack in the kitchen, and he was absolutely right. Instead of tearing out all the cabinets to actually get at it, Martin has come up with a better plan. I've actually dropped the trap uh, from, the, from the kitchen sink down into this uh, cavity. Yeah. I'm allowed to do that uh, because uh, I have a vent that I found in the basement that I've utilized right. for this uh, particular trap. So I was able to solve two problems within pretty much one exercise or one task, mm -hmm. clean up the kitchen drain and inside the cabinet as yep. well as uh, be able to connect the trap to the venting with an allowable limit and, and meeting all the code requirements. Very smart. I got three things when I first walked up here into that attic access. A small vent. Yeah. Only a single vent. That's right. Uh, not enough insulation, definitely. Number two. It's not fluffy enough. Yeah. And it looks like there possibly might have been mold or still is mold. And because of the insufficient venting up here, I mean, the moisture is just sitting up there. And we have some surface molding. It's nothing's too bad. I'm not too worried about that. It's not like it's black and hairy. It's just some surface molding. So I think we caught it in time. Not worried about the mold. We'll just top up the insulation and get some venting in here, buddy. Well, it's definitely leaking, 
but it's not leaking tremendously. It's coming in here. I don't think it's penetrating the house. We see no signs of water damage on the inside of the house, which is good news for us. So it looks like we just have to tackle this area, figure out something to stop the water from actually getting in. The thing about the laundry room is it was one of those things of, oh, that's weird. Oh, well, we've been living in an apartment for six years and had to go <gasps> down to the basement. Laundry. So we have a laundry room now. Okay, yeah, fine, I'll, I'll deal with it. <laughs> I just want you guys to lose the drywall. We're going to start playing with some ideas on how to make this functional for her and make it proper. And it'll actually give Martin access to this sink today, too, because he is going to rip that out and start fixing it. Bruce, what'd you find, man? Some issues with the piping. Tease in backwards. Right. It's just like plumbing, right? You want it to flow like this. You don't want it to have to come back all the way to this part, and then you have to go flow back into the unit. Exactly. And then we've got some short tees. It's basically clogs waiting to happen. Right. Uh, this unit is vented to the outside, so they've brought it from the garage through the basement and through the outside wall. Do we have to vent this thing? No. Great. It's so close to the ground that actually moisture and insects can get into it. Plus, there's nowhere to move it to. If we can eliminate it, that's yep. even better. I can eliminate that vent off the side altogether. No, we could do that. It's not a problem. So besides you taking that out, I, one thing I have to do today is find that drain. And I know it's under this carpet. Even if I run the camera from, uh, from this clean out, it will take me out to the street floor drain is just a branch line, which right. ties into the main line, so I will not be able to get physically access to it. Only if you had another stack. Exactly. That, right? Yeah, so um, this carpet really, even for my plumbing purposes, may have to be pulled up just so I can find the floor drain, so. It's amazing, eh? We're looking for a floor drain. We moved some walls to make this a functioning basement, and look what we gotta do. We gotta lose, like, what, is this a five-year-old carpet? Pretty much, yeah. It's a shame. Yeah. Uh, oh, what do we got there? Is that it? Uh, give me a quick pick, please, or is that there? I've never seen an electrical plate over a drain. There's the drain. Martin, oh, see what Floor drain. Yeah. Now, this is why we didn't find it, actually. They had, like, a, a metal cap on it. Yeah. And they used floor level here. You they can actually that's, see that's it, so they leveled it out. out. That's yeah. why we couldn't yeah. find it. So, uh, I think we should scope it. Um, I want to know if there's any problems with it, obviously. It definitely is an original piece. It's a clay material. Yeah. Um, so the video camera will actually give us an indication of what condition this, this pipe is in and are there any issues. Right. As you can see on the screen, we do have a piece missing. Oh, um, right at the end. There's actually yeah. a section of a clay pipe that is missing. Is that what I'm looking at right That's here? That's exactly what you're looking at, yeah. There's this piece missing, and, uh, and if I pull the camera back a bit, yeah. uh, you see that crack actually continues farther up. Oh, so what this allows is literally soil to get in. Yeah. And as I was trying to push the camera farther into the floor drain, it's just completely blocked. You know, it, this can only last for so long. We're fixing the drain. So. That's what you're telling me. Yes. So the self-leveling cement was barely bonding to the floor and I could pull it up with my fingers. So once that was up, I found the furnace drain line hidden under a strip of metal with some duct tape over the sides and silicone down. Unbelievable. That is unreal. Turn air going to the second floor through the garage. So I'm basically sealing up all the joints. There was a lot of openings in here. What happens is if you have any off-gassing from the car or anything that's in the garage, that'll get sucked up in through your return, which eventually is gonna go out through the house. So I started by putting the silver tape on. You know, the silver tape is good, but it gets cold in the garage, so eventually it'll dry out and peel. So I'm kind of going to the extreme here. Again, you know, you go to the extreme. I'm putting a sealer on top of the tape which is very flexible to hot weather, cold weather. So it'll, it'll flex in and out. It won't peel off, it won't dry out. Um, so I think, you know, that's the best way to seal this up. Get the tape on, get the sealer on. That way you get nothing leaking into the house. 
So we've already started taking a look at this. What's happening is obviously the J channel's filling from the siding, right? Well, yeah, when the siding was done, you know, they've installed basically a uh, flashing. Yeah. But typically what you want to do is, is actually make this a drip edge. So what's happening here is it's running down the face, running into the yeah. soffit overhang. So what we can do is we can slip a drip edge uh, in underneath this existing flashing yeah. and then kick it out this way. That would so actually great. And can we do that along Absolutely. the whole edge here? Yeah, front and back. The back of the home is the same situation. Right, because so. they didn't bring it low enough. You can see, actually, they didn't quite bring it low enough on the front edge as well. Yeah, even if they uh, had they dropped it below yeah. the, the elevation of the, the soffit, that would, would, would have worked as a drip. Right. Uh, but the problem here is because it's it's you know basically flush, yeah. it's just transferring the water back in. So we have some trough here that's been leaking a little bit. What do you think of it? Uh, well, it's in good shape. Are you okay with the size of it? Yeah, it's it's five inch trough. Yeah. Um, it's aluminum, so it's in it's in good shape. Right now, downspouts, other issue. Well, really, the only problem with the downpipe again, it's aluminum. Someone's gone along and stapled the uh -huh. maybe Christmas lighting into it. We're thinking Christmas lights because they did it right across the front of the house too. They came all the way down here. I mean, I thought venting. I don't know. Air behind water, right? Help it flow? Well, no. no it, it, I think that's all it was, 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 was that. Yeah. And you notice the corrugations in a downpipe. That's actually to prevent freezing. Right. Uh, because it's not a flat surface right. and, and that sort of thing. It's harder for the, the ice to cling to it. So we're going to replace um, that. So we'll just replace it with a new downpipe. As soon as Steve's guys got on the roof to actually start doing the work, they realized that all the trough had the same staple holes as the downspout did. That's why we're going all new. So when you dug this up, this is what you found? You found this PVC pipe? Pathetic. Someone has taken about a three or four inch PVC pipe here, drilled some holes in it, and is actually connected into a hole. He's created a hole into the clay drain pipe and that is what has allowed this thing to crack. And I don't want to just yank it out. If it's tied into the weeper on the outside, I don't want to just yank that out and I have a hole in my weeper on the outside. I don't know what he did. So let's break it up, dig this part out carefully, get the guys going on it, and let me see where this is going before we go any further. Get another shovel, let's just dig this out carefully, please. I want to see where this is going. Well, it's not that big of a deal, actually. It's actually better than I hoped, because this isn't actually doing anything. At least I know now I can do this and not have to worry about it. Somebody has tied this drain into the weeping system downstairs, into the homemade weeping system. It was bringing a lot of water into the house unnecessarily. And you can actually see the amount of water that's actually come in here today by looking at the corner of this patio. The panel that's there isn't, uh, isn't a bad one. The, the issue more is that uh, I've got knockouts on one side, wires are going through it, it's crammed, it's... It is. It's really tight in there. What I was thinking for you guys is actually eliminating that furnace wall there, just studding out that back wall, insulating, and just doing a basic uh, electrical panel door for you guys. Really busy day today. We have Insta Insulation coming in today. They want to spray foam the garage and the small area above the front door. We also have Adam and Martin in the basement today, and they're fixing the drain problem. Now, they are calling for rain, which is actually a good thing, finally. We have Tail coming today. He wants to see where the water collects so we can actually finalize and fix our problems. Lots of work going on. We've got the floor drain set up. This will be trimmed uh, when the final level is set. Absolutely, I'll get my floor in and then we'll cut it flush afterwards yep. and I'll just stick the drain cap in. Yep. So that's actually perfect. We have the drain within the laundry room now. That's awesome. Now we have one last drain to take care of. That's the one we're installing in the backyard. Teo, you get, it's a perfect day to see why we're actually doing this drain. We got about three inches of water already. It's been raining only a little bit this morning, right? So. One problem, we've got a gas line right where we want to put the drain. 
I have two hydro lines back there that come off the transformer at the end, two major electrical lines. We also have cable back there, plus who knows what else. So we really don't want to start digging back there. Let's swing it that way. Let's you want to swing it out this swing, way? Swing right under the fence. This way we can go a little bit steeper, get the water out of here right away. So we don't have freezing issues and everything else. I like that idea, let's do that, okay? So let's start mapping this out. Let's get the guys digging. This isn't gonna let up and it's not gonna be fun. Guys, I wanna leave the gas line where it is so we always know. I want you to just peel up this corner of the patio stones right here. You might as well start trenching it. I like the leaf catcher idea, so even if the leaves sit on the bottom here, water can raise up and it can still get make its way in here. It's smart. And the other thing is too, it's got a sump in the bottom, so there's a space for the homeowner to get in there once a year, twice a year, to get in there, clean all the debris out of the bottom of the unit. Which they should do on a regular basis, yeah. at least you know twice a year. You don't want any contamination think. getting into the field. Right, right, right. Good. Pitch on this. Your pitch is pretty good right now? Yep. We're installing a new type of weeping system that's essentially a weeping tile surrounded by pieces of polystyrene and encased in a geotextile. It cuts down on gravel and construction costs in the end, and it's completely made of recycled materials, which is always a good thing. Now all the water that used to collect on the patio can actually flow into the drain, out through the weeping system, and leach into the surrounding area. <laughs> Thanks, Adam. We gotta make sure that uh, all the gaps are 100% sealed. If they park their car in here, we don't want carbon monoxide going into the house. So we got it insulated and everything, drywalled, mud it, call it a day. Okay, so what we wanna do is we're ready now for drywalling the ceiling, guys. I just wanna insulate the back plate, that's the outside wall. Get that done, okay? So get a piece of insulation in each void. So we'll get some drywall down. Maybe someone can jump on that. Okay, and let's get it done today. Well, it looks like a mess to everybody else. Everybody asks me, well, how do you know what is what? I'm used to it. I know what is what. I got to replace my lines that are coming from the meter base outside in. About half an hour and about another hour to cut this in. So give me about two hours. Now, uh, we'll have this powered up. So the existing issue with the attic on this home was that it wasn't vented properly, both with the roof fence as well as the soffits not being open enough with the plywood coverings. We're gonna cut large openings around the perimeter of the house to allow the cooler fresh air into the attic as an intake. Cutting out our uh, opening at the ridge for the ridge vent that's being installed, that's the most ideal spot to vent the roof is right at that uh, top peak where all that warm air is traveling to, correcting the soffits, the roof fence, and the attic insulation with proper uh, baffles. It's gonna really get the airflow going in this attic. We did not peek at we all. Didn't look. We We uh, came by to pick up our mail from our neighbor, but even walking by... I'm not room. looking!
That's good enough, guys. We'll wait till the side gets here, and then we'll do, we'll border this whole thing, okay? So what we're doing today is we're priming bare drywall in the garage. It's about two to three times harder than priming over uh, painted or primed drywall. It just it sucks it up, it's uh, very porous. So what a lot of guys will do is they'll thin the primer down so it spreads a little easier. But by doing that, they're killing the durability and the adhesion qualities of the primer. So what I'm going to do is spray it on full strength, back roll it to really press it in, and uh, that'll leave a smooth, even finish on the wall. This box on the outside is a weatherproof box. It's a metal enclosure. They're rated to be installed outdoors because they're sealed. Plus, with the cover that I have on here, there's a rubber gasket that stops moisture and water from coming in. If you remember before, it was all pipe work. It was just, just a big mess. I was able to run all the wires on the inside. We ran a new circuit for the outside plug because it was tied in with stuff inside, plus with the lights. Done all wrong. Now it's a dedicated line. And also now, when they go to turn the lights on and off, it is the proper way. Sorry for taking so long. We had to no clean up the driveway and make it right, make it look good. Nice to right? see you. Look at, I love this part. Yeah. <laughs> we always do this. <laughs> so you know what? Is we built you a new house. Awesome. <laughs> you know I'm kidding. Yeah. Come on. Okay. But Come the garage on. looks nice. Well, it's actually somewhat new, somewhat clean. Yeah. This is actually a nice steel mm -hmm. insulated mm -hmm. door done <laughs> properly. Opens in, not out. But not that yeah. the other one did. It was just completely all wrong. Yeah. Uh, I love this. We brought in a, a specialist when it comes to the central vac. And if you look at this, he laughed and said some elbows were wrong, some fittings were wrong. Uh, we removed the vent, which I'll show you in the side of the house. But you have a brand new one, by the way. Yay. And actually, <laughs> top of the line, you're really going to like it. It's... Does it actually suck stuff up? Yes, it will. <laughs> it, it will. It will actually suck stuff up. <laughs> we had the central vac system. And uh, I was using a regular vacuum for a lot of the house because the suction wasn't there. So to have something that actually works <laughs> is so cool. Nice and clean, good yes. electrical, everything's proper. Uh, I'm happy with it. And then Damon did the extra little. Oh, that's great. Well, I really love the little shelves you guys had hanging here. Oh, but yeah. uh, you know, I was afraid of killing him. Yeah. I almost killed him on the first day. But that is not a shelf to no. use. The way that was put together, I'm yeah. surprised it never came down on your car yeah. or you. That's right. yeah. This whole wall, this whole ceiling, that whole wall is completely insulated. And I absolutely guarantee it won't be cold upstairs. Perfect. Again. <laughs> <laughs> Let's walk around the front. All right. We also pulled down the front soffit here and made sure we insulated that, put in a nice perforate. It makes it look clean. It's totally insulated. If you notice, you have a new mm -hmm. piece of aluminum across there. So now it's completely cocked across the top. You'll have no water penetration at that point. I'm happy. And notice there's no vent here. Where's the vents? Yeah, they disappeared. It's, gone. it's, gone. it's because both were removed. We brought two high vents up here, which is the proper oh, okay. way of doing it. Okay. I asked Damon to put in a gable vent, and that's in your attic space. So that gable vent will now bring in the fresh air as much as on the roof. Brought in Steve. That's He's right. got new east drops, downspouts. I don't know if you noticed. Oh. And on top of your roof, not only do we have a gable vent, but we put in a ridge vent. 
New soffit vent underneath, ridge vent on top, gable vent. Now we're going to have that air pull through the area that is very important. Mm -hmm. Not to mention there's about an R50 of additive in your attic of insulation. Was it like R20? Yeah. It was about half of that, yeah. 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 Remember that big waterfall of yeah. water that yes. came upon here? <laughs> well, now you have an actual drain. Oh. We dug the trench all the way over to that side with a big pit, so the water, this gets picked up. We had some heavy rain in the past couple yeah. of days, and this took it. Yeah. A wonderful new uh, weeping system that we put in place. It's like a big sock, and all it is is just really, it's a, like a white foam pebble. Does not let any dirt in. No stones needed. Directly out to a big pit that's out there, completely sealed. Good. Let's take a look at the basement. <gasps> oh my god! You got new carpet. <gasps> And I'm wearing booties, so I don't damage this carpet. Yeah, really. And you have handrails. Oh my god, it looks sides. like a real basement, <laughs> like a nice, beautiful basement. New handrail. We brought in a professional yeah. to do this. And actually, he did a really great job on it. Spindles. We want this safety. You have enough room to bring things down and bring it through, so I, I made the call and said, go ahead and put it up. This is cool, <laughs> having the railings and stuff going down, because before, we just had the one single rail going all the way down and now it's got the spindles and another one on the other side so you know Hayden going down the stairs or any other our niece and nephew going down the stairs they're safe they can hold on and and get down and it's beautiful look at it <laughs> door number one yeah it's just under the stairs but there's now a wall there and this town turned into completely just storage wow. door number two <laughs> Where did all these doors come from? <laughs> oh my god! Yay. So you have a proper laundry sink. Let's go to the other doors. Because everything was so tight, we wanted to make sure that you had it proper. Yeah. Washer and dryers now plumb properly, electrical. Damon awesome. even pulled the drain that was over here under the floor, brought it in to the washer and dryer area, and now from the furnace is channel line to the drain. And then now the drain's on the right spot, because if you have a flood there, they don't want to ruin your new carpet, right? right? Yeah. yeah. So you have uh, pretty well a lot of new drywall. The ceiling is dropped, new pot lights. As we walk through, it looks a little different. You yeah, like the color down here, at least? I mean, this <laughs> yeah. is a little Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> Why does it look different? Hmm, hmm, what'd we do? <gasps> oh, you took out the wall. We took out the wall. The wall is gone. And this is this that's the is this door number that's the door eight? to the <laughs> that's the door to the new gazebo. Oh my god. Oh, it's brand new. Oh. So you have a new panel. Yeah. Surge protection doesn't mean don't get a surge power bar for your TV, but it will back up the whole house. Always put in something as you're just, you know, I lost everything in my house from lightning. I don't want anybody else to get it. We also took down the entire ceiling to check on the wiring and plumbing, and the bros made sure all of the ductwork was working properly. And they also installed a new gas line, fixed the venting to the hot water tank and the furnace. They had to make sure there's absolutely no more off gassing. Just looking around, I just lose my vocabulary. I can't. <laughs> it's just, I can only say amazing. Yeah. I, 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 it's just, it's great. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much. Absolute pleasure. Oh, he's getting the tip. I usually get the change. I know. I thought I'd be thanks. Thank you so much. Hey, my pleasure. My pleasure. I hope you enjoy it. Everything's functional now, everything's yes. safe. That's what I care about, you know, safe yes. and then functional. But I'm a happy man. You did a good job. Thanks, buddy. Everything, it was just, you know, you kind of put these things through your head, like what could they do? And it was just beyond our expectations. Just, you know, uh, uh, incredible. High five. Oh, please don't end it with that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> we figured as some Did you do a painting? painting? Maybe. Oh, oh, no way. <laughs> Did you need that? Do I look like that? <laughs> <laughs> you gave me more hair, too. <laughs> that is really good. Two awesome. little things, no earrings. I'm going to cherish this. Thank you. <laughs> Can I give you a hug? Of course. <laughs> I won't get my sandwich on you. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you, everybody. That.